Okay, everybody, it's 10 o'clock Pacific time. We are going to start today's webinar. Oh, I just got a message that the audio is horrible. Hey, Mike, about, can you? Uh, let's what's see. I mean, can, uh, you sound fine to me, but. Okay. Well, I'll continue. And if it's uh, if it's bad, we'll just have to pass over to. Yeah, Mike, I, mean, but... I see, I see uh, Dan there. If anybody else is having audio issues, please pop a uh, yeah, pop let a us know. question there. Let us know what you think. Um, and normally you'd be seeing us by video as well. Uh, video is even more horrible. Um, the webcam uh, service seems to be broken on the webinar platform. So we'll just be talking to you and you won't be able to see us. Um, that's yeah, our loss. But... Go to webinar has decided that uh, they don't want to look at us today. Yeah. Uh, so welcome to, to our webinar today on modernizing your phone system with Microsoft Teams Voice. Uh, for those of you that have joined us at our webinars in the past, you know that we like to do uh, a lot of lunch and learns, and we can't really do those anymore because of the pandemic. So we've moved over to doing um, webinars only in this pandemic world. Um, and so we're going to do our best to create the live feel. We usually do a better job with the live feel with the web webcams working, but today will be audio only. Uh, we've chosen Teams phone system for the uh, subject of this webinar. This is one of the fastest growing solutions for our customer base. Um, in addition, people's views of phone systems have really changed as a result of the pandemic. Uh, one stat we mentioned in our last webinar is that nearly uh, two thirds of workers now consider work from home as their primary work environment. And when you think of an environment like that, where most of your workers are now at home, really makes you view the phone system quite differently. Um, Having a physical phone system or something like that, or multiple phone systems in each of your offices uh, might not make as much sense anymore. So this is one of the reasons why it's, uh, this service is growing so fast for our customer base. Um, Teams phone system, you have a phone system in the cloud and people work from anywhere, they get their phone calls wherever they are. Um, and also, as we hit on a lot of things in this webinar, in our previous webinars, you know, so many things have changed in the way we work. And so um, feel free to bring up any questions that you've got on this webinar, any changes that have occurred in your um, work environment as it relates to, to Teams, phone system, or anything else. Uh, we'll answer these questions along the way. And we're going to have a, sort of some uh, pseudo Q&A here in this webinar where uh, I'll be the MC and moderating a bit. Uh, Mike Proctor, our Chief Operating Officer, will be giving the uh, the presentation. So feel free to um, uh, answer, uh, sub, uh, submit questions uh, along the way, and I'll be uh, monitoring that. And I'll interrupt Mike along the way to ask him some questions that come in from the audience. Um, and then we'll have time afterwards to answer any questions. So, and then some of the more advanced questions we may need to talk offline or schedule for a uh, another meeting. Uh, also, please note that the slides, uh, you will get a link to the slide deck later this week. So feel free to take notes, but do know that the, uh, the content of today's webinar will be emailed to you. And as a reminder, um, we're answering questions along the way. Um, I'll be you know, doing that as I mentioned, so don't be shy. Um, go ahead and answer your questions and we'll go from there. So now I'm gonna pass it on over to Mike to talk about the Microsoft Teams voice. All right, thanks a lot, Wade. Um, <clears throat> real quick. Before you go, Mike, did you want to do the poll question now or after? Uh, yeah, with our... yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead and kick that off in just a second. Um, okay. I was going to say briefly, so for Dan and, and anybody else that's just not having the audio work properly, um, we'll go ahead and get you the deck regardless. And I do believe that we put up, um, if not the entire uh, webinar, at least pieces of it, the video piece as well. And always, as always, we're happy to, to do a one-on-one -on -one sort of event, maybe even a little, a little more closely tailored towards what you might be looking at. So if this is just unbearable, um, we apologize. I don't know if the same issue that GoToWebinar is having with uh, the webcams, uh, maybe some some other sort of media issue, ironic considering the uh, the topic of the of the webinar today, but um, anyway, I, we apologize profusely if anybody else is having issues, but we do still see a bunch of other people on, so we're going to move forward as if uh, this is a, um, um, a limited sort of a problem. 
So Wade, why don't you go ahead and put that poll up on the screen and uh, we'll um, go ahead and address that Will now. Do. We, uh, you know, we, we usually like to, to get a little bit of, a, you know, pulse from people um, at the beginning of, of these and, and find out why people are here and what they're most interested in learning about and uh, see uh, what we can what we can tailor. So this is a multiple choice. Um, well, actually not multiple choice, apologize. This is a select all or the, and apply. So um, if you're, you know, identify why you're here today and I'm gonna keep an eye on the results. Um, looks like pretty much everybody wants to know how they can replace their phone system with Teams. That's, that's good because that's kind of what I was planning on talking about. It's always nice when those line up. Um, a lot of people want to know pricing and licensing. Perfect, right up my alley. Um, okay, and very few people have no idea what Teams is. That's good. I like that. Oh, but a couple, a couple. Uh, we'll leave this open for another. Uh, we get 81%. Maybe we'll leave it open for another minute, or well, 30 seconds, and uh, go ahead. Oh, there's another one in there. Yep. All right. Perfect. I think we can close it now. We got 90% yeah, of the people voted. Right. And then the result, do the results come up for everyone when you close it? I think they do. And they did not. Okay, well, um, just we'll, just so people know, it looks like um, pretty much neck and neck between replacing your current phone system with Teams and uh, what does it cost to do so. Um, so those, are, those look like to be the big ones with uh, sprinkling everything else. So good. Glad to hear it. All right. Um, <clears throat> So today we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams Voice. Um, you know, Teams Voice in, in this context is the ability to use Teams to make good old-fashioned phone calls uh, to, to regular telephone numbers. Lots of lots of you guys are, are already using Teams for voice and video conferencing, and uh, for a lot of companies, just adding regular phone calls to it is a natural extension. You've got the right equipment in place. Uh, people already know how to use it, and there's some potential to save a lot of money by eliminating some other other systems from your enterprise. So what I'm gonna do um, is when the buttons work, there we go. Um, if, if anybody on here, looks like there were a couple that's totally brand new to 365 or Teams. Uh, Teams is Microsoft's collaboration software. It, it's part of Microsoft 365. Uh, I, I like to describe it as a combination of Slack and Zoom running on SharePoint and connecting all of Microsoft 365 together. Um, at the beginning of the, of the COVID pandemic, there was a massive uptick in, in popularity when, I don't know, hundreds of thousands or millions of people were, uh, were shoved into working from home. And uh, that's what these stats here on the left now, those are uh, those are from April of this year, so little, right after the pandemic had just started to get going. And these are the latest public numbers we have. Um, so there's uh, definitely it's it's gone up since then, but um, it, that was a huge spike. I forgot how many multiples it was, but it's pretty pretty ridiculous. And uh, you know the platform is held together. Tons of added capacity has gone into the system, and, and things have been working exceptionally well given the amount of stress that everything was was put under and that's important because you want you know if you're going to put your phones onto a platform you want it to be a platform that can handle uh, growth that can handle uh, you know, spikes in usage things like that and, and teams has proven to be that platform so if if you've been on any of our other webinars then you've probably seen a slide similar to this that we usually put out there uh, just kind of talking about Azure, the size of the network. Um, you mentioned you almost always that you know, Azure is the biggest network on the planet outside of the internet itself, definitely the biggest network owned by any single entity. Uh, this diagram is a little bit different in that it highlights the network endpoints all over the world where Azure interconnects with the public internet. And anybody that's familiar with other RTP services like voice over IP, you know, you know how important it is to bring the network edge as close as possible to the user in order to, to minimize latency and keep the voice quality or and video quality, keep them, keep them high. And Azure's world-class backbone here is a huge part of why Teams Voice is uh, such a, a good solution. 
So I've got a handful of slides. I'm gonna read through these pretty fast. Uh, just, I wanna give you a brief overview of what your users will experience. And then um, I'm gonna move on to what your admins can experience. Uh, we have a little demo um, that just kind of gives you an, a, a taste of what the user experience looks like. It's gonna be a little bit interesting because we had planned on having webcams for the demo. So um, stick around, should be fun for all of us to see how that turns out. And then at the end, we'll talk about how you get started and pricing and, and different things along, along the way. Um, like Wade mentioned, he's gonna keep an eye on the questions. So if a bunch of them pile up or if there's something super pertinent to what's on the screen at any given moment and um, you know, and it's not something he thinks we're gonna address, then he'll interrupt me and we'll take it right on the spot. All right, so first we're gonna take a look at the overall user experience and touch on some of the more notable features. This slide right here, uh, this actually says a lot about what makes Teams great. So because Teams was built for the ground up by Microsoft to be a modern, unified product, you get a clean, just familiar interface on, on any kind of device. So if you look at, this is just an, obviously just an example, little screenshot, but you've got a desk phone, a mobile phone, and then a, the web browser client, which looks almost identical to the desktop client. And everything works not identically, but as close as identically as possible given the different form factors. So no matter how your users are accessing the system, it's gonna work essentially the same way. And that's mainly because the software, if this is all written and controlled by Microsoft, regardless of who the device vendor is. So if you've got a mix and match of old devices, new devices, um, some BYOD phones, some company owed mobile phones, uh, it's, it's Microsoft experience and controlled and managed by them. So if you have hardware upgrades that haven't been done yet, or you change vendors for different parts of your system, that doesn't affect the productivity and require retraining the way that a lot of uh, they might be familiar with if you have legacy PBX and are used to dealing with with regular phone system vendors. Hey, Mike. Yo. Got a question. Want to go back in that slide? Um, somebody asked, can can any phone be used with Teams? No. Um, so if you've, it does not. Teams does not today handle standard SIP desk phone endpoints. However. That is a roadmap item, and it's been announced for either first or second quarter of next year, they're going to have regular SIP connectivity um, with a limited feature set. So they are going to be opening that up. Um, now, I would take that with giant chunks of rock salt in that until we actually see what, uh, what they're gonna allow, um, don't, don't get your hopes up too much. Don't, don't sit on that crate of 200 Cisco IP phones from 2004, thinking you're gonna be able to deploy them in, in your environment. Um, but the, I think the main reason is that there, there are lots of, of regular voice over IP phones floating around out there and, um, you know, and, and people would like to use them. Another thing I'll say on that topic is if they, when that support does come out, I fully suspect it's gonna come out in conjunction with another piece of on-premise equipment to make it happen. So if you've got an SBC on-site or some other equipment to, to make the translation, uh, for lack of a better analogy, then I think that that's likely to happen. I would not expect to uh, grab you know, an, old, an old Polycom VX and have it connect over the internet and just work with Teams the way that Teams devices work. I don't, I don't think that's gonna be possible. The protocols won't be there. The authentication routines aren't there. Um, it, it's just, it's highly, highly unlikely for regular old SIP phones to be able to connect to Teams without additional equipment the way that Teams devices can. I do think um, that they are going, there's gonna be a way for you to connect an entire site full of phones up to Teams with an SBC or something in the middle, and you'll get some you know, basic making and receiving of phone calls uh, when it's done that way. Perfect, thanks. You bet. Okay, good question, great question. Um, okay, so this is, speaking of devices, uh, this is a super high level snapshot of, of all the different types of things that are already in the environment and in the ecosystem um, that, that you can use to connect. You know, 
and what we've really found is is with COVID, um, it was just a big mix and match of all kinds of stuff just to get people connected. Uh, regular USB headsets, old US uh, UC headsets, Skype for Skype for Business connectivity headsets, even non Microsoft certified stuff plugged into a PC or Mac. All that stuff seems to work quite well because the Teams client pretty much handles it. Um, Teams enabled desk phones work great. You know, car phones and wow, listen to me, how old am I? Car phones, mobile phones, um, PCs, and then there's a bunch of, of newer devices, the Teams room systems, these collaboration bars that you may or may not have seen, which kind of look like a kind of look like a sound bar with a webcam in the middle of it that you set on top of a of a regular consumer grade television in your conference room and now you've got you know what would have been a five or six thousand dollar room system you know you get that for a few hundred dollars now uh, in any conference room and it's, it's fully fully teams enabled so there's a lot of, of different ways that you can use teams and um, a variety of different capabilities that you can have so before we get too much farther into the uh, into the presentation i want to talk about a couple of different terms i'm going to bring up a lot just I, I started doing telecom back in 1992 uh, and so I, I kind of fall back on my old old terminology from time to time but I want the first one that I'm going to use from time to time is, is PSTN public switch telephone network at that's really just a stupid nerdy way to refer to good old phone calls um, some people may use POTS, P-O-T-S for POTS line, which is actually short for plain old telephone service. But so POTS lines, PSTN, that's basically just referring to regular regular phone calls. Um, and the other one is PBX. Um, it, that's private branch exchange is what that stands for. It's a really, really old term, but it kind of turned into a way that in the industry that we were referred to the phone system, dusty big cabinet in your back office somewhere that is way bigger than it needs to be and costs a ton of money to keep running. So anyway, PSTN and PBX probably come up a lot. Um, all right, this slide here, this, this kind of brings together some of the key philosophies uh, that underpin the, the team's calling experience. So uh, first of all, it's a simplified all-in-one solution. Uh, mainly that means you have a, just one application and you can manage calls, chats, meetings, um, calls within your company or in and out of the regular PSTN network, single application. Um, you can start those phone calls and answer those phone calls from any Teams-enabled device. And uh, at, as part of the Teams app and its connectivity into Microsoft 365 and Exchange, all your contacts and calendars are always up to date and synchronized across all the different devices. You've got one work phone number that you have to manage. So desk phone, mobile phone, PC that it all shares the same number. So your uh, colleagues and, and clients never have to go hunting you down. Um, any call that you're on, you can just turn it into a, a group meeting on the fly by just hitting the add button and grab someone and add them in without having to do all kinds of call merging and stuff like you do on a cell phone. It's pretty easy to do on the team's clients. And then you've got a regular dial-in conference number for outside phone callers that don't don't have teams or people driving down the road on their cell phone. It's good old fashioned conference calling stuff is there. You've got a, a, a bunch of rich calling features like uh, consultative transfer, music on hold, voicemail with transcription, all that kind of stuff is, is in the product now. You uh, you can have group call group calling and group groups being able to receive calls um, so if you've got like a support group or something with five or six people in it they can all see those inbound calls coming in and, and you can handle who takes what where it's not a full acd or anything but it has a lot of that functionality you can also just have simple delegates for um, uh, executives or other people that may have an assistant or a handful of other people to handle calls for them you can set up those delegates as well and then uh, you all, of course, you get auto attendance and call queues and all the other stuff that's kind of table stakes in, in phone systems these days. And, and then finally, towards the end of the presentation, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some of the management capabilities and, and I'll show you the, through the team's admin portal and give you an idea of what, the, uh, what, the, what your admin folks will be doing behind the scenes to keep it all up and working. All right, 
So a lot of you um, actually, based on our poll, are here because you want to learn more about how Teams could allow you to finally get rid of a legacy phone system. Uh, a PBX replacement in a in a large office campus is a I mean, that's a big project. Any of you who have done this before know it requires substantial planning and analysis. Um, the good news is though that we can give you true cloud PBX functionality with zero on-premise requirements now, if that's something you want to do. Um, we do, we have a, a Teams voice assessment that we go through or will we recommend anyway for, for larger environments because we wanna make sure we uncover all of the different features that your company might be using. Um, here, right here is, is a slide that, that lists the basic stuff that's in the product today. This slide is actually six or seven months old. Um, it's a high level slide anyway. I have, a, I have a, a database that's updated every month that we use for our assessments that, sh that gets really down into the weeds as far as exactly what type of features are supported in Teams today what you can do with full cloud PBX, additional functionality you get if you go to uh, an SBC installed on site or in the cloud. And then beyond there, we have some other third-party carriers that interconnect directly with Teams now uh, that can give you even more sort of niche functionality uh, that, that may not appear in Teams anytime soon. So if you have sophisticated call center requirements, things like that, there is a really, really, really large list of things that can be supported, but when we start getting into those types of deployments, it, we really want to have an assessment and, and identify those things and present to you the different ways that some of those things can uh, can be dealt with. Hey, Mike, we got two questions. I think both yep. of you can answer pretty quickly. Um, sure. How easy is it to port our existing uh, group of numbers over to Teams? Uh, piece of cake, um, most of the time. So I, there's a, well, you'll see the porting screen. It's, it's a screen with like two fields. It's pretty boring. But if you're moving an entire phone bill, it's incredibly, it will be the easiest number porting experience you've ever had outside of a cell phone. Cell phones are the easiest. This is the second easiest if you're moving the whole bill. Um, it's, you fill in a couple of things on the form and Microsoft just does it. Um, you know, you know, you're not dealing with, faxing and signing or scanning LOAs and all of the other you know stuff that has to go to the LEC and crazy E911 paperwork and it, it's 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 much much easier when you're just moving the whole bill over if you're moving part of a bill there's another couple of forms and uh, not they're not even forms they're just uh, they're just pages on the in the in the admin center on the website Microsoft does and I've I remember the days of, of when all of this was a nightmare and uh, Microsoft does have buried within the bowels somewhere. They do have a, a sophisticated LNP or local number portability department that deals with the LEX globally, not just nationwide because they do this all over the place. And uh, if, if necessary, if you've got a super complicated situation or you've got 4,000 DIDs and you're trying to split some of them out because you've got a merger acquisition situation, something along those lines. They do have a sophisticated number porting department that we can wrap in when necessary, but for the most part, um, you're just filling out forms online and nexting your way through the wizard. Perfect. And then the next one is, is there an attendant console? So there is not, well, okay. If you're thinking about physical sidebar or uh, excuse me sidecar like fields of buttons that you would have next to your desk phone i haven't seen one yet we're always looking um, we keep waiting for someone to do that I, and it's really weird no one no one has done it what there what does exist is uh, third-party software that connects to teams and gives you uh, the the software equivalent and i don't I don't know at this point if we're ever going to see the field of buttons that uh, most uh, receptionists or people that get stuck with that role from time to time, since it's hard to say how many dedicated receptionists are left out there. But uh, I don't know that we're ever going to see with with full Teams native functionality that field of, of physical buttons. Um, my number one uh, phone vendor for providing 
big fields of buttons has kind of usually been polycom and they've changed dramatically in the past three years uh in fact their devices now for teams uh we don't use very often because they don't have any buttons it's it's touch screen only and while touch screens are neat and cool and that's fine but in in my experience if you want a desk phone it's because somebody wants to mash the plastic buttons and slam the receiver up and down it's not that they don't, they don't want a, a fancy solid pane of glass touchy thing sitting over there if they wanted that they'll just use their mobile phone so anyway perfect um there is good third-party software that gives you that functionality for uh for an attendant console awesome thanks i'll let you get back no worries all right um uh, real quick, so Teams, is, this is not the first time Microsoft has dabbled in the voice market. Uh, they famously purchased uh, consumer VoIP Skype back in 2011, and they've had enterprise communication stuff for like Link and live communication server. They had that stuff for decades, and those those were interesting products and initiatives, but they were never really comprehensive enough to pose a viable threat to the the big phone carriers. But now, with the Azure network as its backbone, um, Microsoft has established itself as a, a regular PSTN voice provider here in the US. And so now they can offer end-to-end -end full service capabilities, so local phone numbers, E911, the whole nine yards. And, and that's, that's what enables Microsoft calling plans. And this is, you know, there's been kind of the missing link as far as uh, giving us really, really, really easy PSTN capabilities without having to do any phone stuff. The same global network that we keep talking about here also makes it possible uh, when, when you for when you use Teams for audio conferencing, you can you can get to a highly reliable, low cost, worldwide network of local dial-in numbers. Uh, all all of your Teams users with the audio conferencing. Uh, which it's part of the basic business voice SKU, or you can buy it separately. They have access to all of the local dial-in numbers at no extra charge. So if you're familiar with any of the big conference calling providers, intercalls and, and whatnot, you probably know how fast those international minutes can add up, uh, especially if you're dealing with ITFS numbers or anything like that. But with, with Teams audio conferencing, it, it's part of the regular monthly price. We have a fair amount of customers that jumped onto the audio conferencing bandwagon way back when it was Skype for Business a few years ago. Um, you know, you'll have it's pretty common in California. You have companies in the Bay Area, and then they have a, a second facility that might be in India or in China. And those local in-country numbers are there, so those people can just dial in. They can make a local call, and they're on the same conference bridge with your people here, whether they're connected via IP through a Teams client, or if they're dialing in from a cell phone driving down the road. And that's all part of it. There's no extra, no extra charge, charge for that. There is an extra charge if you want a toll-free number, uh, but as far as local dial-in globally, uh, everybody gets access to that. Okay, so, so far um, that was, you know, look kind of what the end user experience would look like. Uh, next, I'm gonna jump into the admin side, Wade, no other questions right now? Um, <clears throat> one more question was, uh, we have 100 sequential DIDs, uh, phone uh -huh. numbers. Yep. Can we port out individual numbers? Yes, you can. That was the part where um, we want to be careful uh, because you, you, we need to make sure that the porting department doesn't move the whole thing, obviously. Um, but yes, you can, you can pick. The, now, so the granularity at which you can pick out DIDs from your number block comes down to the originating LEC. So the, the carrier that owns your numbers now, they determine what they are willing to let go of. So sometimes it's blocks of 20, sometimes it's the entire block of 100, and it comes it can come down to what switch the numbers live in um, at your LEC. So if you're in, in the middle of nowhere and you're on a DMS 100 that has been out of production for 25 years, they may not have the ability to break that, to route that number block any differently than the entire block. If, you're, if your LEC is is on a modern platform, Sonos-based or, you know, some, some broad soft or something like that, then chances are they've got one by one uh, granularity. So 
a lot of a lot of the ability to move numbers around comes down to the originating lec and not on the carrier that's taking over. So I can't blanket say yes to every situation, but we we have definitely broken up lots of DID number blocks when we're moving customers onto teams. Perfect, thank you. You bet. All right. So, um, you know, we have lots of in-depth training options available for uh, Teams Voice administrators, uh, but this is, I've got like six or seven slides here. We'll, we'll breeze through and, and kind of hit some highlights to show you what it looks like behind the scenes. The, the Teams Admin Center is now, it's, it's all built into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Uh, we don't have to pop out to other weird portals or anything like that. You can manage everything from right in here and it all, it all has the same look and feel and, and it all ties together. If you are electing to do this on your own and <clears throat> excuse me, not, not looking to bring in someone like us to help you, uh, then, or especially if you're a smaller company and, and you wouldn't need, you know, need too much help. There's a getting started little setup wizard that's here. And uh, I mean, this is the part I was showing you how the porting works. Um, it, it's super simple. You put in your number and, and or, or you can select numbers. They actually have a, a, a large database of numbers available uh, nationally and, and globally too. Uh, nationally, when you're picking a phone number from the available database, it'll show up right here in the dropdown. If you're picking up numbers in other countries, then um, you, you select the country and it's, it's, a little, it's a little bit different, but regardless, they have local numbers available if you don't wanna, wanna port them in. Frequently, we'll, uh, we'll let people or recommend that people go ahead and grab any old numbers out of the system to get things set up so that you can go ahead and build the environment and have it ready to go the second your port completes. So um, most of our customers wind up picking up some numbers out of the database, even if they're gonna be moving their numbers into the system afterwards. Auto attendance, call queues, you know, this is a, a key component now in just about every, um, in every setup and it's it's all part of the, part of the service. Um, you know, in auto tenants are super easy to set up. You can have lots of them. Um, there's voice to text options in here. So you don't have to go find a phone and push some star, star commands and then record the voice yourself, telling yourself you're gonna replace it with somebody that sounds better. And then five years later, it's still your voice on the auto tenant because you never got around to it. You don't have to do any of that if you don't want to. You actually just type out the uh, text of what you want your auto attendant tree and it does a pretty reasonable job of, uh, of reading out the different options, dial by name and, and all that kind of stuff. And then custom greetings, you just type out it and it'll, it'll avoid a text to voice that text to speech, I guess, uh, in up to 14 different languages. And it does all that for you. Uh, you can have meeting uh, music on hold. You can have uh, recorded promos on hold if you want to upload that stuff. All that stuff is just built into the, the basic team service. Uh, one question, Mike, is can uh, we upload our own on hold music slash attendant greetings? Yes, you can. There you go. Um, <clears throat> centralized device management. Um, so if you if you deploy desk phones, room systems, those collaboration bars I was talking about, all of that stuff gets managed right from within the same portal. So there's another spot where the unified software experience uh, with Microsoft really really pays off big. Since you're, since Microsoft controls the client software and all the devices, you get cross vendor management capabilities right out of the box. You don't have to pay for additional management software from the hardware makers. Um, so anybody that's had a, a polycom environment or um, anything like that, a lot of times you have to SSH into the phone or do a crazy chunk of uh, you know, keypad commands on the device itself and watch it reboot and all this other stuff to get it configured, get all the SIP information loaded properly. With Teams devices, that's not the way it works. It's all, it's all user-based. Um, so once the user logs in, it picks up all of its configuration from the, from the control panel here. And this is nice. You can push firmware updates or schedule them for later and configuration changes. You can manage your um, DLP 
policies and other security policies. You do this all from right within the, the, the portal. And it doesn't matter if you got new phones, old phones, Yealink phones, Polycom phones, you throw them all together and you can manage everything here. And you don't have to pay for additional software from some proprietary hardware provider. Uh, with any with any phone system, you from time to time your users may experience some call quality issues, especially if you've got a large campus environment with complicated switching on site. Uh, sometimes you can run into some QoS issues on the network locally. Uh, we we run into that a lot more when we've got people that have got old switches feeding all of the desktops, and then they didn't have an office where they could run another set of Cat5 cable, so they piggyback everybody off of the desktop wire. Um, you, you, you can run into some funkiness, and uh, most of the, Teams is is a little bit better here because they have the Silk protocol, which is the protocol they got from Skype, which is considerably better at managing low bandwidth and latency than um, some of the other uh, some of the other older regular SIP protocols, G728 and G729, stuff like that, that's been around forever. So Silk does a good job. It came from it came from the Skype acquisition, which I don't know who's old enough to remember, but Skype was initially built to run globally on the worst internet connections, 25,000 Wi-Fi hops and um, just stuff all over the world in order to give international connectivity to have it sound okay. And when you take that protocol and give it modern internet, it, it sounds phenomenal and it uh, it does great with firewall traversal and it, it's it's just a, a good protocol, but it also helps things work a little bit better in a, in a LAN environment as well. Regardless of all that, um, you, when you have a user that's having quality issues, it, it can be really tough to figure out what it is. So there's call analytics built into uh, the dashboard here right as part of the Teams panel. Um, here's a, a snapshot or a zoom in of the dashboard itself. But there's there are some third-party tools, but you don't really need them. Um, the, the Teams dashboard is, is just getting better. Every few months, they keep rolling in more functionality and, and giving you a lot more information right into the right into the admin console itself. Uh, so far, we've pretty much just talked about how you could replace Team or you could use Teams to replace your legacy PBX and your phone carrier all at the same time. Uh, but sometimes you may want to use a traditional telco to actually carry those minutes. You, I mean, if you've got a, a specific configuration where it's cost effective, aka cheaper than the Microsoft one size fits all plans, and that can happen for a variety of reasons. Um, could be tons of toll free traffic, could be tons of international traffic. Uh, maybe you've got a carrier that's already providing you some call center functionality as part of their offering, and we want to, you know, Microsoft isn't going to do that. Um, there are a lot of different options, or excuse me, a lot of, of different use cases where it might make more sense to go ahead and use a different carrier other than Microsoft for the actual minutes. And we can do that with the Teams direct routing feature. And direct routing is essentially how, how you would use the Teams client, regardless of what it is, and the Teams phone system. So think of it this way, the PBX functionality of Teams is in the Microsoft cloud. That's you know that's where they extensions and um, what user is connected to what voice path and what Teams client that user is is getting their audio and video routed to. That's that's all kind of part of the the cloud phone system component. So the the piece over on the right in this diagram. And normally, um, Mike. Yeah. Another question about um, back on your previous slide, but you can stay here. Um, is there a capability to record calls for quality purposes? um like for jumping on oh, i'm trying to think if you can do that like in the in the acd yeah no no i, I know thing. yeah um the problem is i know you can do it but i'm trying to remember now if we can do it without a third party um i don't believe that there it's i don't believe that that offering so I'll, re I'll research any, it. Oh, then we can, yeah, yeah, any well, so 
you can record any call. That's easy. But it's not, but whether or not you have like a, an offline person that is a manager or something monitoring, being able to initiate uh, recordings r remotely that's not actually one of the members of the call, I don't believe that is a, a current function. You can record your own calls easy. It's it's the it's whether or not a third party can do it. I we may need to have we may need we may need a third party to do that. We definitely do it, but I don't think when we set those up, it's usually part of a, a larger call center solution. And anytime we get into a large call center, we're talking to um yeah, eight by eight or one of these other guys that has full teams interoperability, which I'm kind of touch on a little bit here. Um and and that's well, I'll go ahead and dovetail that in. So let's say in this diagram here, you have a um, a call center environment with another carrier. A lot of those carriers, 8x8 happens to be one of them that we work with, they have a uh, a full, they have a full call center solution that runs on their platform, but will use the team's phone system as endpoints. So in this diagram here, that box in the middle, um, don't look at the words, just for the purposes of this conversation, but that box in the middle would be eight by eight. And so in there would be their UCAS platform with their call center software and their management for recordings and all that other kind of stuff would be there. And then they connect out to the PSTN on the left but they use the team's phone system for actually presenting calls to the clients on the other side. And that's how, that's how this, that kind of stuff works when you're going to that type of setup. What's more common when we're doing direct routing is that that box in the middle is just the telco carrier. They're just transporting the minutes in and out and they're giving you a different network as opposed to Microsoft's, and it can be priced completely differently um, for a variety of different reasons, um, especially internationally. Uh, there's a lot of different things they can do. And, and the most common thing we find is that people have a relationship. If, you know, if you're doing $50,000 a month with CenturyLink or something today, you probably get way better pricing than we can do uh, on, on with Microsoft directly. So when, when those kind of things are happening, we usually look at a, a direct routing relationship. And we also have a lot of our own carriers that we work with um, that we can do the same kind of thing with as well. That being said, up to a couple of hundred users, the Microsoft phone system generally makes the most sense for most people. So. Okay. All right, so this section here there's again five or six slides and uh, these are mostly animated little slides um, that wade and i were gonna look at with you but now you're on your own so we'll just kind of talk to, to what we see so here if you, this is a, a a video of the uh of the web client or the desktop client again the functionality is is very similar depending regardless of what kind of device you're using um, you could see there that this little this person used the mouse and actually clicked on the numbers which I would shoot myself if I had to do that you, I mean you can just use regular numbers I use the numbers on my keypad or the you know the little the nine key off to the right on the keyboard to pound out phone numbers you don't have to do it with a mouse um, there's also you couldn't quite see it there but there's a, a speed dial section if you've got some people uh, that are pinned or favorited to your speed dials, they, they show up there for single click connectivity. Um, if you've got uh, a, so like right here, we're gonna see that's your speed dial section. There's a little phone icon right underneath Adele's face there. What's another nice thing is in Teams, if you click on that and it's someone in your company, you'll get a drop down that shows you, it'll either allow you to connect directly to their Teams number or if they're in your Outlook or in your contacts and they've got other, other phone options like, uh, like a mobile phone or whatever, you can just select that from there as well. So I have people in my company I call all the time and I know that um, I'm more likely to get them directly on the mobile number um, if they're in a sketchy cell area where the mobile number is gonna be more reliable than doing, doing it over 
over VoIP to their client. So, but you get that drop down. So anybody that's in your contacts, you get an option to call directly to their team's number or to another number, regular PST number that might be on the contact. Transferring calls. Uh, this is a very common question. You know, how does that work? So here's an incoming call right here. They answer the call and um, they're going to do a blind transfer here. So they're going to go up, hit transfer, pick somebody you can type to search or you can select from the list and off they go. That's it. So that call was it well, it's being transferred right now and, and now it's gone. So um, real straightforward. That's how you do it. Uh, it, the again, the the client, the exact client experience may vary a little bit, but not very much. If I pick up my desk phone right here, I've got the same options to do the same thing. So from a training and, and user experience, I mean, I don't know if, how many of you have swapped out phone systems in the past and you remember the little printed cards you had to give people that would sit under their phone for six months while they learned all their phone features that no one could remember and pound commands and star command all you don't have to do any of that stuff anymore it's all straightforward and, and written right there in language that you can easily understand anybody that's ever worked with uh with sales people and you, you take a call and all of a sudden they ambush you with the customer on the phone when you're not prepared for it well if you don't want that to happen then you want the consultative transfer so this is We've all, well, not all, most of us have, have dealt with PBX phone system in the past where you get a transfer to somebody and you get a chance to talk to them real quick before you release the call. In Teams, it's it's a little bit different. You can it, you can transfer right with the, the text option there. So I was talking over it the first time, but it'll, it'll loop around and do it again. Take the inbound call. And when you do transfer, you say consult, then transfer. And same thing, you find the person you want to go through ask them do they want this call do we send it to voicemail do you send it to somebody else what do you want to do with it um of course you're nobody ever answers back this fast but it's a demo where everything is perfect and uh you you get the response send the call over and, and you can transfer the call that way so you don't have to just blindly send them over every time uh delegates so delegation is is was one of the features that a reasonable chunk of our customers was waiting on before they were really ready to, to to make the plunge into using teams as the phone system so if you've got um you know like this is here that eric person um this was a uh basically answering a call for 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 the delegate there so if you've got an executive that doesn't take all of their own calls or they want to be able to take calls even when they're out of the office then that person's assistant or, or whomever happens to be a delegate can go ahead and pick them up on their behalf and, and work with them directly. And you can see line status. Uh, you can resume a call if you put the, if it's on if your uh, manager puts a call on hold and you need to re go pick it back up. You can go ahead and do that. That's pretty pretty sophisticated delegate management. Parking calls is another one um, that is has been. Pretty popular. Um, it's funny. There's one of these features that uh, people that haven't been around forever may have not even known that this was a feature that a lot of phone systems always had. Um, and it, it's nice. I, I use this a lot for when you're on a call and you want to go pick it up in the car. You know, I, you can put it on hold indefinitely, um, but then it, it's stuck on the same on the same device. So you want to actually transfer it from your Teams client at your desk, whether it be a desk phone or the, the desktop client, and you want to actually pick it up from your mobile team's client. If you hit transfer, which you can do that, you can transfer it to yourself, but now you're answering your own ringing phone and fumbling around and dropping the phone on the ground and all that other stuff. And instead of that, you can just park the call. When you park the call, it gives you a two digit location for where the call is parked. And you can take your time, get the car turned on and Bluetooth connect all that other stuff, and then just pick it back up and, and to pick it back up, that's shown in this example here where you just go to your team's client and then go to parked calls over there on the right, put in the two digit code for where the call is and, and just pick it up. And there's no, you know, there's no rush to grab it before it stops ringing or, or deal with transfers or anything like that. So that functionality is all part of Teams as well. 
group call pickup is similar, uh, but this is you know, if you've got a support group or a sales group uh, that you want to have at all of them access to the same number or to the same queue, then you can do that as well. This is um, actually this little video is somebody how a user can set up their own groups. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of group functionality that users can do on their own. For the more sophisticated groups, you're going to have your admins do those on the background on the back end, but you can set up kind of ad hoc groups between users uh, so they can collaborate on their own and and not have to necessarily drag IT in every time they want to do everything. And that's it. I mean, there's there's a ton more functionality available, but uh, the goal wasn't to go through everything, just kind of give you an idea of uh, what things look like. Um, Next off, we're going to get into kind of the steps to get things going and pricing and whatnot of any other, any admin or uh, or feature user side questions we want to address before I jump into that. We are good right now. Okay. All right. So what is next? Um, here, It's pretty easy to get started. Uh, the, the business voice um, uh, SKU, which is the newer add-on. Uh, that is gives you this voice functionality into just about every Microsoft 365 license now, as opposed to having to have enterprise ones. That actually has a, a 30 day free trial. Um, so you know there you can you're going to get the slides. You can click on the link there to get that. And there's a couple of links on here for where you could find more information. The the trial I talked about it's it's limited to 25 users, which is the same across all of the Microsoft 365 trials. But it does have all the same capabilities. You can jump on there and you know make free phone calls if, if you want for for a month for up to 25 people. And that is an add-on that works with just about every Microsoft 365 subscription. The cost for that is is $20 a month per user. That's all in. There's no taxes on that. Um, so if you're comparing that to another uh, voice over IP or cloud PBX provider, keep in mind that telecom taxes can be, you know, 12 to 20 something percent. They're pretty substantial and varies a lot based on states and municipalities and things, but it, they're not cheap. So having that $20 be a an after tax price is is significant. Uh, I don't know if it's always going to be tax inclusive. I I suspect that they're doing it that way because it's easier for micro on their side. I think they they'd rather pay the taxes to the municipalities based on lump sums rather than figure it out user by user. I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere down the road they don't find a way to start charging for that, but who knows? I've never seen them charge taxes. They don't today and there's no um, and no roadmap item I know of the charge. So right now at $20 is all in. What that gives you, it gives you the actual PBX functionality. So the phone system stuff, your extensions and your transfers and your voicemails and all of that stuff, it gives you that. It gives you the domestic calling plan. So it's uh, 3000 domestic minutes and that's pooled at the tenant level. So if you've got a hundred users, then that's 300,000 minutes to be used across the entire organization. So if you have 40 people that don't make any outbound calls, and then you have two people that make 10,000 minutes each or something, it, it's still fine. It's, it's a pooled uh, amount of minutes across everything. And then this also- so we, are getting, we are getting a ton of questions now. <laughs> okay. Um, um, let me- well, let me, let me, let me know what... ask one more. So then the third component, I'm going back to questions one second, because otherwise I'll forget. The third component is the audio conferencing that I talked about, which is uh, it's available for $4 a month separately, but it's also part of, of this new business voice SKU. And that's what gives you local number dial in or dial out to the uh, conferencing functionality of Teams. Okay, go. Um, can... Is it possible to get test phones to test during the 30-day trial? Um, we can do that. We have a limited amount of, of demo uh, stock. We have some Yealink phones that we ship around in the office. Um, it's a limited supply, um, but we can we can do it. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how many are in the office versus out in the field right now. I know for a fact 
I have at least one um, because it's sitting on my desk over here waiting because um, I just got it back. So yes, we can we can work something like that out depending on what your requirements are. Uh, is the Teams phone system included in Office 365 E5 license? Phone system is and audio conferencing is. So I'm going to talk about enterprise in just a moment. So I'll, I'll dive a little deeper into that in a second. In the next slide. Um, the $20 plan does it include conference calling feature through Teams, including call-in numbers for meetings. Yes. You hit on that. One. Yes. Uh, is the user telephone number or is a user the telephone number or everyone with an Office 365 account? We have multiple users using the same number and generic Office 365 accounts. Well, I'm not sure what a generic account. I, guess, I think the answer is every user has their own email address and their own phone number. So you sign a phone number to a user account in Office 365. Yeah. So, but when people are sharing a number, um, so an auto attendant right. uses a special number called a service number and a service number does not require it to be attached to an individual user. So if you have an auto attendant that needs a phone number or you've got a conference room, or you've got a common area use phone. Those are all individual types of licensing setups that can be turned on that don't require the phone number to be linked to a user. Now, what will happen behind the scenes if you've got six people sharing a phone, um, you know, sharing a number, they'll have their own DID. Um, if they're going to be able to place and receive calls from the PSTN, then they have to have phone system. And when you have phone system, you have a DID doesn't mean you have to publish it or, or tell people about it they can go absolutely go ahead and share uh, that the you know one number like like you want to do perfect thank you mm -hmm. is that it okay yep um, yep real quick on international calls and toll-free calls those are not there is a there is another calling plan add-on um, that you can add for if you have people with a lot of international calls, but if we're just making a couple sporadically here and there, then um, they have something called consumption billing or, or communications credit, sorry, they renamed it. And so there is a cost per minute way to add on minutes when you go over, or if you want to do international or toll free or something where you're not buying a whole bucket of minutes. Um, okay, this is the same thing um, calling plan, but if you're doing direct routing, uh, what you're saying, you still wind up getting with, with business voice, you wind up getting the, the PBX phone system and the conferencing, but it strips out the calling plan, which makes it $8 less. Now, $8 per user, tax included, is cheap. Um, I mean, it, it's very, very infrequently is that, it, it, are you going to save money by going directly to a telco for $8 per user? but that's not every time. Sometimes you have 300 users and 200 of them never make phone calls, but you really want DIDs for all of them. Fine. In, in some of those cases, it'll, it'll make sense for us to go to one of our other providers that is a kind of a pure play minutes provider and, uh, and we can do a little better. So we always look at all this stuff and look at the whole package. If you do that, then this is how much it costs the business voice skew this is how much it costs without the minutes it's 12 bucks instead of 20. now um someone asked a minute ago about e5 e5 is e5 it was the 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 plan the kind of kitchen sink plan that microsoft came out with back in the office 365 days and it had pbx phone system functionality built in and it gave you um in this diagram over here it kind of it gave you what you have on the right. It gave you audio conferencing and it gave you cloud-based phone system, which is PBX. It gave you that stuff and it was all bundled into the E5. Didn't give you the calling plan from anyone. So um, you could add that on for 12 bucks. So you take an E5, you add a $12 calling plan, which is how much the calling plan costs on the enterprise side. I know it was only eight an $8 difference on the business user side, but when you buy a calling plan on the enterprise side, it's twelve dollars uh, anyway so yeah it, in an e5 all you need to do is add calling plans for the people that need to make and receive pstn calls the other stuff is all built in so it's a twelve dollar uptick for e5 users as opposed to for uh, e1 users or business users 
those for them it's a twenty dollar uptick to to get all this functionality uh, other than that between business voice and enterprise voice features and functionality are the same uh, there is a 300 user limit for business voice and that's anyone that's ever dealt with me and, and a microsoft licensing knows that we've got some clever tricks to get around limits but when you're talking about business voice um, it is a 300 user hard limit now you can mix and match business and enterprise all you want so if you've got 350 users and business voice is perfect for you you know we can always put the other 50 on enterprise so you don't have to you know if it turns out that, that that's something that's going to save you some money so we still have some tricks for doing things over there uh, the hey, business Mike, can voice, I Yep. Can I jump in real quick? Uh, yep. We're at the, I know we're at the top or top of the hour, the beginning of the next yep. hour. So I know some people have to go, um, but we're going to finish this up and we'll st Mike and I will stay here to answer any questions. Yes, uh, so absolutely. as a reminder for those that have to go, we will be sending you the slide deck and um, then we'll be following up afterwards to schedule any meetings that anybody would like to have. Yeah. And there aren't really any, uh, there, there aren't any super content slides left. I'm basically just going to talk about pricing stuff and then we'll, we'll take questions, but uh, there's no, no exciting slide. Well, there were no exciting slides anyway. But anyway, you're not missing any content. We're mostly done with the thing here. All right. Uh, okay. So that's the difference between business and enterprise. If you, depending on what country you need numbers in, there are some countries where uh, business voice is not a, a valid skew. Real quick, you, a lot of you have seen this slide before. If it's Microsoft licensing, we can do it. Uh, we do. We know how to do EAs, enterprise versus business bundles, mix and match. All this stuff um, is a big part of what we do, and um, and something we're, we're definitely interested in talking to you about. And um, you know, here you go. What 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 do we do next? Um, if you want to have a, an, an assessment or a consultation, we here's a link here for that. Um, and uh, real quick, we have our, our COVID nineteen relief offer that we keep uh, keep extending because the darn pa pandemic won't go away. But basically, if you if you sign up as a new customer, um, there's a way to get up to a month free for Microsoft Office 365 subscriptions. Uh, so definitely reach out to us about that. And uh, that was it. Um, happy to take any more questions people have for as long as they want to keep asking them. Uh, I answered a few and then you answered them as well. How much is the international add-on cost? You hit on that. Uh, how much is the overage if we go over 3,000 minutes? I think that's better discussed. 1.3 cents a minute. Yeah. And these minutes are pooled amongst people, right? Yeah. Tenant, yeah, tenant so, level. Yeah. So we don't see too many customers going over 3,000 minutes since it's, it's pooled. If people are going over 3,000 minutes, it's more likely we'll save them money by doing a direct routing option. Yep. Uh, and then the question is, uh, how long does it take to implement or to, to migrate from the current phone system to Teams? So it depends. Um, if you're doing a, like, let's say you're Ring Central and you want to go um, from Ring Central to Teams, uh, you can do it in, you know, you know, 48 hours. It, a lot of the, a lot of the, when you're porting numbers, well, first of all, if you're not porting numbers, you can be up and running in 20 minutes. Uh, if you're porting numbers, it really comes down to the length of the porting process, most of which is controlled by the losing telco. And unlike in the mobile phone world, sometimes you're losing telco. When, you, when a number port request comes off, then bells ring everywhere and that gets your sales agent of the losing telephone company to start you know, trying to track you down to talk you out of switching. And they have a little bit of leeway to hold on to the port process for, I think, like up to 48 hours. Um, I can't hold it much longer than that anymore. It's not nearly as much a problem, but you know, it, it's it's hard to say exactly how long, but it's not very long at all anymore. Now, complicated environments, sure. I mean, you've got to get phones out to everybody and and plug them in and make sure they have internet connectivity and a bunch of stuff for desk phones and. If you're going to give everybody numbers and then replace them with ported numbers later, then we we can make the process longer. And and with big deployments, you you have to do that, or else your users are just completely lost. They don't know what to do. But if you've got 10 or 20 or 30 people and you're moving on to Teams, and they're just using heads headsets or handsets or 
Um, I mean, a microphone and speakers the way that I am right now, you know, you, you can get them up and running in, in no time. Uh, and you may have already hit on this. Uh, another question is, does everybody in the company need to have the phone system plan? No, absolutely not. Um, in fact, uh, it's it's far more common for only a handful of people to be using Teams for voice. What we, I mean, I, I guess I should have talked on this earlier, but uh, with COVID, that's the most popular thing is that we had a bunch of people that, you know, in, a lot, in most companies today, not everybody really uses their desk phone very much. Um, if you've got employees that are under 35 years old, the odds are that they sit there at their desk talking on their cell phone with their dusty desk phone right next to them. And when it rings, they know that it must be somebody within the company because nobody else ever calls them there. And those people, um, you know, a lot of them, when they went back to COVID, they were, they were fine because they, they were already answering their cell phones anyway. Well, now you've got a different group of people, maybe the accounting department or executives or people that were heavily reliant on their office phones. Well, they've got a, an issue. Now they're constantly dialing in remotely to check their voicemail six times a day because they can't pick up the actual phone. We can pick up just those DIDs or just those telephone numbers, reroute them onto Teams Voice and get them up and running without having to deal with the whole phone system problem yet. Um, that's a conversation that we're starting to have a lot more often is, companies have this Avaya that's been sitting there for seven months and four people have touched it maybe, and now it's coming up for renewal and what they wanna pay the maintenance agreement on this behemoth and, you know, but nobody uses it anymore. So anyway, you can have as many or as few or as many people using Teams Voice. Another question is, does Big Green IT have their own support plan? Yes, yeah. yep, yeah, we have, um, our own regular support for Microsoft 365 and Azure services. And we're also, um, depending on what you want done in the in the voice phone system, we can, we're, we will take the normal support stuff anyway as part of Microsoft 365, but we have had several customers that want something to directly replace the support plan that they had with, with Avaya or Shortel or whatever, as far as dealing with auto attendance and queues and extensions and things like that. And, uh, and we have a, a just a, an inexpensive add-on for that piece as well. Perfect. And another question is, would you recommend using a cell phone number and Teams instead of telco DIDs and hard phones? So you don't, if you're using your cell phone number, you're not using Teams. Um, unless you were to take your old cell phone number and port it to Teams, which I wouldn't do um so when you're on let's let's talk about mobile phones directly pretty much pretty much every phone carrier now is using voice over lte so they're actually routing your cell phone call over ip anyway on the back end but it's still more robust when the cell phone carrier does it than when you allow on their ip connectivity to run to the team's client on the phone the better that networks get and the more advanced they get, the more the lines come closer to each other. So three years from now, the call quality on a Teams client over the IP connection to your iPhone could likely be the same as the circuit switched cellular mobile phone connection provided by you know, AT&T to that iPhone. If we're talking about AT&T, well, then the Teams call is always better because you know it's AT&T. But um, those are coming more and more together. As of now, today, there are still times where um, you you may want to use the cell phone connection and not the IP connection uh, for getting a hold of certain people. It it just depends. The uh, the the converse is also true a lot of times in that with a with a Teams IP connection to your mobile phone, if you drop out it'll just sit there and you get this little pinging noise, letting the person know that you've gone away for a moment, but then it just reconnects. With a mobile call, once a call drops, it's dropped. You gotta hang up or call back or do whatever. If you're on a Teams call and it drops, it can be gone for two, three, four minutes. And when you get service back, as soon as you get your IP connection back again, you pop right back into the call. So the experience, it's your mileage may vary, um, and it's it's one of those things where you, once you're using the system, you kind of get a feel. Like our CEO, I know that I I know that I'm generally going to call his um, 
I'm generally going to call his his cell phone connect directly from my teams. I'll call his cell phone because it'll hold on a lot more, it hold on a lot longer than the IP connection will. But anyway, sorry, I went off on a tangent there. No problem. Um, and that is, there are no more questions right now. I scared them all away. No, it's been a ton of questions. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, but I, I'm only, I only half answered the other question, I think. As far as hard phones, uh, as far as desk phones, uh, there's still a place for them. They're nice to have because they have regular buttons. But what's what I've strived to tell everybody is that you don't have to give it to everybody in the company. If you've got 10% of your users that really like buttons they can mash on, send them desk phones. Other people that would rather be on a headset all day long, let them use a headset. Other people that love to talk on their mobile phones, just let them use a team client on their cell phone. That way they have one thing they have to carry. A nice thing about doing it that way is they can use their team's number, that one phone number I talked about at the beginning of the call. They can use that and not have to give out their private cell phone number to customers or vendors or other people that they're working with, but they can still talk to them from their mobile phone without having to, to share out that number. That, that's a big advantage I really should have brought up earlier. Perfect. And then if there's no more questions, did you go over this last slide here? Uh, our contact I information? Answering. Yeah, I was I was busy answering questions oh, myself. No, I mean I I just put it up there. I didn't really go into it. Okay. Well then I'm, there's no more questions. I think we are now done with the webinar. Okay. Well thanks everyone. Um either you're welcome or I apologize you didn't get to look at our smiling faces uh with <laughs> webcams, but um there's always next time. Absolutely. Well, everybody have a great day. Thanks again for joining our webinar. And again, you'll get a, a follow-up email and then um, we'll be in contact and hope to discuss the Teams phone system and any other solutions with you uh, in the near future. Thanks, Wade. Thanks, Mike. Have a great one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.